Chris Jericho comes out for the ROH Championship match. Ian Riccoboni is on commentary, and Jericho cuts a promo, wants to face any former ROH champion, and he's even going to whip Lamar Jackson's ass. And they stand in the ring. Is, he, is, he a, is Lamar Jackson a former Ring of Honor champion? He's not, so he couldn't qualify. Okay. Is he a former champion at all? Um, I don't know. I'm sure he's won something yeah. in his life. And with that... Boom, boom. Out comes Colt Cabana. And our caller, Brian, called it on Friday. Brian, and I'm, I'm, I I think Brian said he wasn't the first to come up with it. So Brian and, and also a, a number of very savvy uh, people out there on the internet were uh, had a very clever idea, as did Tony Khan, obviously, of bringing back Colt Cabana for this. What a, a, very, what a return. A, a very, like, this was a very... <laughs> Non-verbal public statement, I, I think, to, mm-hmm. to many people out there. Both, as I wrote in my update today, like using Colt Cabana, it's not just a message for your audience. Um, that is a, a make good, for lack of a better term. But I think it's it's as much a message for your locker room that, you know, this was the source of a lot of contention with people about how Cabana was handled and at least utilizing him here for this. Like, it was a statement by the by AEW acknowledging what I, I think was uh, and continues to be an elephant in the room. Yeah, and, and that is pretty much, like, um, not any more evident than... Uh, I wanted to to dig up this uh, tweet from Trent. Actually, I, 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 he might have taken it off by now. But anyway, he was certainly uh, you know tweeting in support of uh, this move for the boys. So, uh, oh, here it is. Yeah, for the boys, Trent says Cole Cabana's return. So um, clearly, you know, at least one member of the locker room was very happy to see this. I'm sure there were many. Yes. Mm -hmm. So uh, he got a nice reaction coming out. And so the match begins. And this match definitely had some issues at the beginning. There was this spot I actually liked because it wasn't like what they what typically happens. So Cabana goes to clothesline Jericho over the top and he doesn't go up and over. So Cabana goes for it again. And instead of Jericho just going up and over on the second time, because they couldn't do it on the first time. He won't go up on the second try either. So they just continue on, and then Jericho bails over the top rope to the floor on the opposite side. So it was more so not calling attention to, um, you know, they got to the same destination here, but did not uh, bother just doing the redo spot. Well, here's the thing, because both these guys are, you know, like decades plus veterans at this point. I I, I mean, there are a lot of things that might have been mistakes, but like, the recovery was so fast that they had me questioning whether or not they were mistakes at all. You know, well, the the Chicago skyline felt like it was a, a legitimate like slip because they just crashed brutally yeah, to the floor. That was um, very likely a botch, but but it also they also went to commercial right afterwards. They did, yeah. So, so. It, it it also had you thinking, oh, okay, was this like their way of getting both guys to the floor so they could go to commercial? Well, total pros if they did, because it looked like they just totally cracked. It was, it was a nasty fall for both guys. Like they looked like they had no control on their landing here uh, to, to the floor. Um, and Jericho just takes over middle fingers to the crowd. Cabana is crotched on the top and then stops the walls of Jericho, ducks a Judas effect, and he applies the Billy Goats curse. And he gets kicked off by Jericho, then goes for the Superman pin. But Hager pulls Cabana off and he hits his great Asai moonsault to Daniel Garcia and Jake Hager. Flying Apple is hit and then comes off the ropes and is caught with the code breaker as Jericho retains the title in nine minutes and 12 seconds. Mm -hmm. You know, despite like some of some of those blemishes, I mean, I, I, I never really mind blemishes if I if they don't take me out of sort of the immersion of the match. And I thought in both of those cases, the they the recovery, I thought was like relatively like seamless that it didn't affect the quality of the match to me. Um, I really liked Colt's intensity here. You know, the emotional look on his face as he stepped out. I mean, I'm sure this felt very real for him. The, you the know, entrance just, to me was like the whole highlight. I mean, him coming out was, you know, it was, mm-hmm. you know, a, it was, it was the most newsworthy portion or obviously of this. It was almost like the match was secondary. How did you feel about the reception? I thought it was like a good reaction. I mean, you could certainly argue if you were going to do this, they are in Chicago in a couple of weeks, and that's going to be a very interesting audience to hear. Um, j- just in terms of, you know, it's their first time back in Chicago since All Out. Um, I, I I thought it was like a like a, a good reaction. 
I thought it was healthy. I, 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 I would be lying if I said I didn't think it'd be bigger. Like since, you know, like cult becomes such a, a you know, a topic of conversation. I mean, the punk story has been this whole like this match essentially like felt like such a, you know, direct answer to that press conference to what felt like such a big news story that I might have even expected the reaction to be that much bigger in Baltimore. Um, but, you know, it, it could be the city. And, and let's be honest here, like, you know, Cole Cabana has not been featured. And John Cena, in fact, says Cole Cabana was just about a year shy from his last dynamite appearance, which was on last year's Thanksgiving show against Brian Danielson. So if, you know, for, for whatever reason, somehow you might have not been aware of this press conference and this whole CM Punk ordeal. And if you're just going to AEW. I don't know how excited you'd be to see. I don't know how many of these 2,500 people are not aware of the. Well, they're certainly aware. That's true. But like, I mean, you know, would you be, would that translate to excitement in seeing a Cole Cobana match? I'm not entirely sure, especially when you set up this sort of mystery. Uh, Like, you know, anytime you do a, who's going to show up? Like I saw people suggesting Adam Cole being, you know, the former ROH champion. Um, so it's always sort of the problem whenever you have like one of these sort of like, you know, uh, vacant, sorry, mystery, mystery appearances. But for me, and I think for a lot of people like Cole Cabana was, you know, a, a very topical, relevant and exciting surprise. And I, I thought this, the this is also up- this is also a booking decision that I mean, just I, I think the, the Trent tweet uh, aside, I think mm-hmm. this was uh, as much about the people behind the curtain as it was for the audience. Like, if anything, I think this was very much a, um, you know, just a, a a statement from from the top of AEW. Well, as great as this was, I think follow up is just as important. You know, it's one thing to just kind of bring Colt back for this one big spot. But like, w- what are you going to do with a guy afterwards? You know, does he have a role? Does he have a storyline after this? Remains to be seen. Yeah. If this is a one off, if he's just still going to be earmarked for for Ring of Honor. I mean, it was. Mm. Um, you know, you would certainly expect that he will be part of final battle. And, you know, the, all the ROH guys have been on television. He has been one of the few that have not. So I would think at the very least, he will have a presence in, in that sense here and there. I don't expect it to be a big role, but a role nonetheless. 